This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Our first guest tonight <laughs> our, uh, are Lenore Edmond and Wendell Oske from Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories, calling in from Skype via Sunnyvale, California. They're both on the Make Technical Advisory Board, and um, they've been written a bunch of cool projects for the magazine, like the Cylon Jack-O-Lantern, Instant Classic, and the Candy Fab 3D Printer. So today they'll be showing us their tabletop recreation of the classic video game Pong. Welcome to the show, Lenore and Wendell. Hey, guys. Hi. Okay, let's, um, let's move our camera over so you can see what we've got here. Yeah, let's uh, talk about what you've uh, made here. I know that you wanted to make a physical representation of the game Pong. Can you talk to me about maybe the physics involved in that or like what gave you the idea? Well, we were playing Pong, and it's kind of a strange thing, because you wonder, what is this game really? It's not really table tennis, but it's not curved trajectories. It's not really um, pinball. Um, so we tried to figure out what it was, and we made this uh, physical Pong game that is as close as we could figure. So it's got two paddles that move um, up and down, and these are on knobs that turn a timing belt that uh, moves this paddle along a uh, ball bearing slide. And then um, on the paddle, there's a curved surface so that when the ball bounces off, it bounces at a different angle depending on where it hits. And there's also a solenoid back here. It gives a kick to the ball depending on where it uh, hits. So, um, to activate the solenoid, we have a photo gate, so an infrared LED and an infrared receiver at either end of the board here, so that when the ball crosses that point, the paddle fires. So, play, we uh, try and roll the ball across. Okay, you're serving there. There you go. <laughs> nice. Pretty cool. Wow, you guys are really good. Oh, uh, I win, I get a point. Sweet, that's so cool. Can you take us a bit closer up when we talk about the um, the controls, the dial control and the, the linear motion of the paddle? First, let me show you something that you won't think to ask about, which is, why are the walls so bouncy? So in the video game, those walls bounce forever. In, in real life, that's pretty hard to do. What we have is some beryllium copper finger strip here, which is a PCB tooling material. It's also one of the spring materials in existence. Picked up some of this at our local surplus shop, and it's just about video game bouncy. Nice, <laughs> anti-gravity bouncy. That's right. You can't get uh, 20, 30 bounces, but you can get three or four, which is good enough in most cases. Yeah, sure. Okay, looking down at the side of the machine, a little hard to see what you're looking at, maybe, but uh, I'm turning the knob and removing the paddle oh, back and cool. forth, and um, the white thing is the timing belt sliding it along. I want you to point the camera over here. And here is right below the knob. There's a knob. I turn that. Turns this timing belt, which moves the slide, which moves the paddle back and forth. Oh, wow. That's neat. Oh, <laughs> who's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's Zener. Zener the Destroyer. Zener? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Certain aspects of the game. Wow, so cool. Well, can you show us again that IR sensor? I'm curious how the solenoid knows to kick the ball back. Well, um, there is uh, an infrared LED right here, and I don't know if our camera is good enough to show it. Probably not. Uh, sure. Sometimes oh yeah, we can see it. It shows up as a purple dot. A purplish glow in there? Mm -hmm. right here? Yeah. Okay, and that is the infrared LED. And that's pointing across the play field at, over here on the other end, um, a infrared receiver. It's actually an infrared phototransistor. And then all the control for this whole monster is um, actually an AVR board over here, one of our business card breakout boards. And then it's driving a couple of big fat transistors that run those solenoids. They run on 24 volt DC. Oh, cool. Sweet. Yeah. So it's essentially, it's an Arduino clone. It's an, you can make this if you have an Arduino board. Sure. Neat. Well, that covers my next question about the brains. Someone is asking in the chat room if you make a kit to make this yourself. 
Uh, no, but we have posted the design files for the for the um, laser cutting for, for instance, for the um, thumb wheels, for the scoring, and for all of the side pieces to build it up. And since a lot of this stuff in here is surplus, um, it, you know, you may have to modify it depending on what you, where you get your solenoids and um, where you get your finger strips and so on. But we do put, we did publish all of the design files, so you could make it yourself. This is, a, uh, this is a nice work of project. Is the project that we brought to Bay Area Maker Fair last year. Oh, yeah. How did that go? Can you tell us about exhibiting Tabletop Pong at Maker Fair? That was a blast to play Pong with so many people for so much time. Um, so we set it up and had um, uh, Pong running both days, and um, uh, probably thousands of people came by and played it. It, it was a bit of a challenge. The very started Maker Faire, we had a bit of glue break, and we had to quick fix it, and a half an hour into the fair, it was working again, and it worked the rest of the fair flawlessly, and it's been working ever since. That's great. It was a good luck fix to fix something right at the beginning of Maker Faire. <laughs> That's so cool. Do we have any more questions about the project in the chat? Yeah, are you going to bring it to this year's Maker Faire? Um, no. <laughs> there's, you guys make so many projects, there's just like no way to have them all. Even that time that you had that like huge setup at Maker Faire, I remember you guys were like, there's so, we, can't, we have too much space like, to cover all of our projects, we need to think smaller. Yeah, that was crazy. We're not doing that again. We're trying to do one project a year, but it usually bleeds into three or four anyway. <laughs> Chris42 in the chat is asking if there are other infrared sources that sometimes interfere with the, the infrared sensor, or, or is it pretty smooth the way it works? Um, it is pretty smooth the way it works because they're shielded and they're looking for a horizontal light source. The sensor in the middle both has sort of a 20 degree tone uh, of you know, emitting and receiving. So um, it is potentially possible that uh, if you had an this in direct sunlight or in incandescent lighting that it would not work correctly. Okay. And there's a you streamer who's asking if you have any plans to make any kind of like automatic scoring system for it. <laughs> People ask that a lot, but this is really a manual game. It's a lot like a lot more like playing uh, ping pong or tennis than like playing a video game. And all of those types of games are scored manually. Like foosball, for Foo example. Like foosball or bocce ball. You know, it's, it's scored the same way. So it feels right to us to score it manually. Right, right. Nice. Cool. Well, we love it. And I wanna, I'm want to. i sad that I don't get to play because it looks like so <laughs> much fun. Yes. There's a suggestion well, in the chat. They want to know if you can, get elect if you can make electromechanical Tetris. Uh, we have some other games that are going to do like some mechanical versions of at some point. Uh, Tetris, maybe. Oh, cool. Nice. Pretty neat. Speaking of other projects, do you guys want to show us some other things that you got going working on? I know that you uh, you just opened up a new shop space, so you probably have all your projects all ready to go. Yeah, we brought them all into our beautiful cabinets and things at our new shop. We're very excited to have um, some dedicated space. Uh, so yeah, we have we have an egg bot right here. I guess we could get that going. I know so, this this project has been seen so much online. The Eggbot was on Martha Stewart with Bruce Shapiro. It's like so it's many a very, Eggbots. It's a very popular project. I mean, I can see why. There's Easter's video. coming up. You want to draw on a uh, spherical object, and this is the best Go way to do it. it. Oh, yeah, this is perfect for Easter eggs. We actually... Oh, no, let, there it is. Cool. So maybe you can explain for those... I mean, a lot of us probably know what the Eggbot does. You want to explain briefly what it does? Sure. It's a pen plotter for spherical coordinates. It's a uh, it's a little CNC machine, basically, which has a pair of stepper motors that uh, either turn your ball or your egg on its axis with one, and then with the other axis, uh, it moves the pen over it and across it. So. Um, by those two motions, which you could also call, you know, latitude and longitude, you can draw anywhere on this spherical surface except in our polar zones where the pen can't quite reach. You've got to hold it somewhere. So what we're doing right now is we have a ping pong ball here and mounted it in the bot, and we've given it sort of an Easter egg program with one of our standard sample programs. And that is just a regular Sharpie pen there. It's totally mesmerizing. It looks totally intentional the way it like moves the pen and goes to grab another spot to draw. 
very we, intentional. We saw <laughs> something on the blog, that something hit the make blog today that we really loved that was made with the egg bot. Um, that nutritional, uh, the nutrition of one egg printed on the... Yeah, someone yeah. put the nutrition information right on the egg. I, th I thought that was a great idea. That was made by Dan Newman, uh, one of the most active EggBot enthusiasts and um, uh, one of the actual EggBot uh, contributors. And uh, nice. he's done a lot of amazing example projects. I like that one. It made me laugh. Cool. All right. Well, EggBot's exciting, especially for Easter coming up. I, I might make some EggBotted uh, Easter eggs. Oh, look, there's Zener again. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Oh, it's something. She was getting excited about the egg bot, so I had to take her off of the palm game. <laughs> so cool. All right. So egg bot's cool. What else you got over there? Um, we have uh, actually a project under development we thought we could show you. Sure. Uh, oh, cool. We're working on a new bar bot a, um, for a cocktail robotics event that's in uh, uh, San Francisco next week called Barbot 2011. Sweet. And that's happening next week? That's happening next week, April 1st and 2nd. Yeah. Wow, how timely. What does your Barbot do? Uh, it dispenses drinks. Um, I can't stop looking at this. It's too cool. Uh, yeah, it is really cool. Uh, yeah, Don't right. stop showing us. <laughs> so, all right. So, we'll let that keep working. And I'm going to turn the camera over here. So, this is officially known as Drink Making Unit 2.0. Um, I should have put a little bit through here. Um, it is a rather complicated bartending bot, and it's got one channel out of six working right now. So um, it can dispense us uh, scotch on the rocks? Uh, it does not dispense rocks. Uh, <laughs> nor olives from our team. Sure. So we have six flasks arranged around the periphery. These are 500 millimeter Erlenmeyer flasks, and we've got a stopper with two fours, and um, we pump air into one and we extract liquid out the other and it goes out this tube and falls into this um, graduated cylinder. The graduated cylinder is number one, cut. You have to cut the glass graduated cylinder. I can kind of go here and here. And then it's got a pivot in here so they can rock back and forth. And this is the mechanism of the classic Japanese deer chaser from the Japanese garden where this uh, mechanism fills up with water and tips over. So we're using this as our metering mechanism because if you just try and pump the liquid out of a flask like this, there's no way to control how much comes out. It's really just going to be hot luck based on, you know, the amount of pressure and so on. But you fill up the flask with the uh, regular cylinder repeatedly, tip it over into this funnel, pour it down into the recipient's cocktail glass. And cool. then we have uh, six flasks and six graduated floaters that will be mounted here, and we will have an Arduino control system and some um, LEDs and buttons where you pick how much you're going to meter out of your different uh, components, whether it's vodka, or orange juice, or Red Bull, or Missouri, or Kahlua, or whatever. Um, well, that sounds but, like a nice list. What's the most complicated drink you think that the Barbot can make? We are, this is actually the hardest problem in the whole project right here, figuring out how, what to load it. But I'm just going to break a little bit of this right now. Um, so, pretend that I'm an Arduino, um, and then uh, we'll turn on the air, uh, it's now coming out, coming into there, and you see the water pouring into the graduate cylinder. Everything's transparent, so it's a little bit difficult to see, I think. Okay, yeah. we're Great. back. We're back. Sorry for the brief technical hiccup. It is, there is a rainstorm outside right now. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so show us what the Barbot's doing. Okay, so can you trace the... So we, we have a load of water right now. I know it's kind of lame, but it's development and all that. Um, so we have, um, we have water in here being pumped out by the incoming air pressure. It fills up the graduated cylinder. It tips over, pours into the funnel, and returns for more. Wow, that's so elegant. And we'll have six of these working in concert for a time. It is a little hard to see on the camera, but it's kind of like the um, those birds that dip into the red <laughs> liquid. I'm sure it's going to be great. Are you guys up against other bar bots in this competition? Uh, it's not really um, that kind of competition. It's a celebration uh, of all bar bots. <laughs> it's much more of an exhibition than a competition. Great. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait to. I mean, I can't make it, but I can't wait to see the wrap up and see all the other bar bots too. Okay. Awesome. 
Well, thanks so much for showing us your projects, guys. Thanks for having us.